Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're discussing index funds. We'll be taking a closer look at three low expense ratio mid cap funds from Fidelity and comparing them to each other in terms of past performance, fees, and risk. Let's hop into things, shall we? While individual stock picking is a strategy some people select with the hopes of turbocharging their portfolios, it's not for the faint of heart. Investors in growth stocks like Zoom and Tesla saw incredible returns in 2020, but haven't necessarily realized the same gains in 2021. Folks with such portfolios who aren't actually active traders may have seen substantial losses in the last three months. You might be wondering, is there a better way? This is where index funds may come in. Index funds are investments comprised of stocks that are designed to match the holdings and performance of a particular market index, like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. Since index funds are passively managed and have far lower fees than actively managed mutual funds, they often generate higher investment returns. Most index funds that I've seen have at least a few hundred stocks, if not several thousand, making them well-diversified investments. Another investing concept to be aware of is market capitalization, often called market cap. Speaking about markets may evoke different images for folks. Some people may think about open air markets, while others think about air conditioned supermarkets. Alas, neither of these are fully relevant to today because we're talking about financial markets. And then there's the topic of capitalization. Oxford Languages defines it as the provision of capital for a company or the conversion of income or assets into capital. Market cap therefore describes a company's aggregate market value as a dollar amount. There are three main categories for this, small cap, large cap, and mid cap. In this video, we're focusing on Fidelity's mid cap blend index funds. Before we talk through the specific funds, I wanted to provide a couple reminders. First, this video talks through investing in index funds. While it's meant to be a helpful resource, it should not be construed as financial advice. Second, before you start investing, you may want to pay off high interest debt, save up at least a three month emergency fund, and live within your means on a day to day basis. That way, if the market ever tanks, you won't have to sell your investments to afford any emergency expenses. Let's head over to Fidelity's mutual fund screener to evaluate these mid cap blend funds. Now that we're here, we want to select the fund type and for asset classes, we'll indicate US equities, which just means US stock. And then for categories, we'll go with mid cap blend. We will further refine our search by selecting Fidelity funds only, and we'll focus on expenses that are considered low compared to their Morningstar category average. All right, so the three funds look like their FS Max, which is the Fidelity Extended Market Index Fund, FS MDX, or the Fidelity Mid Cap Index Fund, and then the Fidelity Zero Extended Market Index Fund, or FCIPX. As you can see, these are all in the Morningstar category for Mid Cap Blend, because that was what we filtered by on our search. This first tab focuses on historical performance, considering that FSMDX and FCIPX do not have data available at the 10 year mark. We know that these funds aren't as old. Um, it also looks like each of the funds performed pretty differently throughout the year, where FS Max is up over 7%, and then FCIPX is up nearly double what FS Max has done. Since we filtered by low expense ratio funds, all of these funds are pretty low, with the highest being at 0.035%, which isn't bad at all. Morningstar likes to uh, rate the funds, and so we see FS Max has a five star rating, FS MDX has a four star rating, and then FCIPX does not have a rating, likely because it's a newer fund. From what I've seen, none of the Fidelity Zero funds have been rated by Morningstar yet. Let's take a look at the risk tab. They're all considered about the same amount of risk. When it comes to risk, there are a few different metrics. The first is standard deviation, which is a measure of volatility. It tries to compute how far a measurement 
such as a rate of return, tends to deviate from an average over a particular period of time. So the greater the standard deviation, the greater the range in past returns. And though past performance is not a guarantee for future returns, historically speaking, standard deviation has been a strong indicator of future performance in a mutual fund. Also, I noticed that I used the language mutual fund, and some people may not be fully aware of the difference between a mutual fund and an index fund. An index fund is a type of mutual fund that tracks a particular index. Usually this is done A, passively, and then B, because of the passive management, it also results in a lower expense ratio. With general mutual funds that aren't necessarily index funds, the goal may be to outperform an index or outperform the overall market, whereas with index funds, they're just trying to match performance. So all index funds are mutual funds, but not all mutual funds are index funds. Another risk metric that we want to pay attention to is the Sharpe ratio, and that helps understand risk-adjusted return. So in short, it describes how much excess return do you receive for the volatility of holding a riskier equity. Beta further describes how volatile a stock's price is in comparison with the overall stock market, and R-squared is a measure of the percentage of an asset or mutual fund's performance that's as a result of tracking against a particular benchmark or particular index. On this next tab, we have the management and fees. Like we saw on the performance page, not all of these funds have been around for 10 years yet. FSMDX is almost hitting the 10-year mark. It'll hit there in September 2021. Um, FSMAX has a manager tenure of 18 years, whereas FCIPX, since it was established in 2018, is a lot newer. I think that reflects in the assets for each fund, so FS Max is a lot larger. Their turnover rates are relatively similar. Just for context, a turnover rate is the percentage of a fund's holdings that have changed during the past year. So when a fund has a high turnover rate, it increases the cost bared by investors because um, the cost for a turnover is taken directly from the assets, in addition to the fact that you're still charged that expense ratio or essentially a management fee. Um, other things we want to pay attention to, so these all have $0 minimum investments. That's not the case for, say, like Vanguard funds, um, where for some other funds it may require like a $3,000 minimum investment. So the barrier to entry is a lot lower here. And then they're all no load funds. So for context, a load fund is a mutual fund that comes with a sales charge or commission. Usually, funds with a load fee would be from a different firm than the one you're trying to buy it from. For example, say I tried to invest in this ARK index fund from my Fidelity account. I'd be charged a whopping 5.75% load fee in addition to the regular investment costs like expense ratio. That can definitely eat into my profits over time. However, this is avoidable. I could get around this fee by either investing in a comparable ARK ETF or perhaps a Fidelity mutual fund with similar holdings. And then lastly, we have the NTF. NTF stands for no transaction fees. And again, transaction fees are another type of expense that you can occur when um, investing in a particular mutual fund. However, uh, Fidelity Screener tends to automatically filter out funds with transaction fees. Morningstar rankings is a little less informative in certain ways just because there is limited data available. However, we can see that like FS Max historically has ranked um, pretty high across uh, funds in the mid-cap blend category, and um, we only have information for the one-year rank for FCIPX, again, because it was established in September 2018. For the one-year rank, actually did a lot better than FSMDX, but it does not have an overall rating yet. We're actually going to skip the income characteristics tab because the things that are relevant to us are also covered in the daily pricing and yields tab. So let's skip ahead to short-term performance. Short-term performance is interesting because it gives you a more granular view of what's going on in recent months and the current year more broadly. Year-to-date daily describes cumulative returns, whereas the year-to-date metric alone doesn't account for compounding within the year. I think those two values tell different stories, so you'll probably want to consider both and understand both when you're researching and deciding between Fidelity index funds. Last, but certainly not least, we have daily pricing and yields. As the name suggests, 
This gives us information about the current net asset value, or NAV, per share. We can also see the daily changes by dollar amount and percentage. The 30-day and 7-day yield metrics are not relevant to this fund since it does not contain bonds. When you're looking at the last dividend amount, be sure to understand it in context. Since FS Max has a NAV that's six times greater than FCIPX, we wouldn't expect them to have the same dividend amount. You also want to consider the cadence of the fund's dividend distributions. FS Max distributes in April and December, FSMDX gives dividends in June and December, and FCIPX only shares dividends once every year in December. Alas, we've finished walking through the mutual fund screener for these three options. Let me know in the comments, which fund would you feel the most inclined to invest in? In some ways, when it comes to these three funds, we've only scratched the surface. I didn't want this to be a 20 minute video, so I'll post part two, where we'll explore the holdings and portfolio compositions of the three funds, and I'll link it here. If you subscribe and hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when the new video drops. As always, thanks for watching.